Are we beginning to see the seeds of an anti-mask revolution? Joining me now, he's the host of the Adam Carolla Show, author of his sixth brand new book, Everything Reminds Me of Something, Advice, Answers, But No Apology. Adam Carolla joins the showroom. Welcome, Ace. Good to see you, my friend. It is lovely to see you, and I'm so I'm I'm excited to have a nice chunk of time with you to talk about the things that are going on in Southern California. You are a parent. You talk to parents. How are they uh, meeting with the idea that there could be more mask mandates, not just in school, but indoors, everywhere in LA County? A very strong possibility. Well, I think people have sort of hit their saturation level. At least some people have. The others have not. And it's kind of the problem in Los Angeles and California because we're like a super Democrat majority. And they go, who's making the call to do these things that don't make any sense? And then you go, oh, it's one of us. Well, then we'll back it, which is a pretty intellectually bankrupt way to go through life. Figure out if stuff makes sense or doesn't make sense or is based in some science and then decide whether to do it or not, not just have your side mandating it and then blindly backing it, which is basically how we roll in California. Do you think it's going to make a difference politically? When will California shift? Uh, because there are Republicans there. There are conservatives there. There are libertarians there uh, who are really sick of the monoparty system that you just described. But, you know, even as we're talking about President Biden's mental decline, two of the names that keep popping up to replace him on the ticket in 2024 are Gavin Newsom and Kamala Harris. Yeah. So combined, zero IQ. There's something <laughs> wrong with both of them. There's yes. something wrong with Gavin Newsom. I mean, there's just something wrong with him. I've had him in my studio before when he had the balls to come in and discuss and debate things. I destroyed him, and I was put on academic probation at a junior college. So um, he is not going to fare, fare well on the national stage. But there's something wrong with him. He's a circle talker and probably a circle other thinger as well yeah, yeah. kamala you harris is just talks and circle jerker what kamala Not that, harris, Adam? Uh, god i said it you said to say it I know, I did. kamala harris is she talks in a circle she doesn't really talk in a circle she talks in a linear kind of straight line but it's the same word over and over again so i have no idea why either one of these two numbskulls thinks they're going to run for president but that didn't stop joe biden no and and there were plenty of people even within the democrat party who were warning their fellow democrats like this isn't going to end well uh it was interesting because this weekend at the turning point student convention that they had in Florida, Gavin Newsom, you know, and obviously that's a very conservative convention, uh, Gavin Newsom's name popped up as the biggest threat in the 2024 presidential field, which kind of shocked me because anyone who's lived in California, anyone who's got a, even a scintilla of rationality knows that he has done so much to damage the state. Republicans should be begging for him to run. Yeah, I agree. But on the other hand, we live in a nutty enough time where who has horrible, horrible policies could beat someone who has horrible tweets. And then we might be saddled with another four years of an insane person uh, running the country. It is it, it, it is sad and, and weird. And, and California has turned into such a mess. And I've been here my entire life. And. You know, I keep saying to people all the time, what, when is this going to end? And they go, when we bottom out. And I'm like, why do we always have to bottom out? How come we can't just see what direction we're going and stop? You know, like your your son has a problem with drugs. Why do we have to wait till he flatlines to intervene? Why can't we plan an intervention now? Yeah, I, I, I never understand it. it. No, but that's that's such a good point. And, you know, it's like what they say. Uh, it, the going wisdom, which may not be the truth, is in order to get help when you're an addict, you, you have to bottom out. But I don't think you have to barf on a stranger's baby in order to 
change your behavior. So who would you like to see? If, if you had your ideal, because you talk about politics a lot, uh, you know, you're, you're one of the few people who has escaped cancellation, although you have been incredibly honest and forthright with your opinions, which brings great joy to my heart. But who would you like to see realistically? It doesn't have to be President Trump. It doesn't have to be Michelle Obama. Like, who would you like to see do a better job of running the country? And you can include yourself in that if you'd like to. Yeah, so as far as, you know, who could do a better job than Kabbalah Harris, well, one of those plastic owls they put up on signs <laughs> so seagulls don't crap on it would actually do a better job than Kamala Harris because the plastic owl wouldn't have bad policies. It would just be a plastic owl. So I'll go with the plastic owl over Kamala. Uh, I'll, I'll bring up a name of a guy who asked me to testify in front of Congress about uh, three or four years ago, Jim Jordan. I just love that guy. I love how straightforward he is. I love how he shows up with the stats, and I love how he, he brings it. So uh, he's not running, but uh, I'll bring up uh, Jim Jordan. The only problem with Jim, jo Jim Jordan, which, you know, this may be an asset for a lot of people, he doesn't own a sport coat. doesn't own a blazer. That's true. That's true. But he, you also know he's not a nervous Nelly. He doesn't pit out. You know what I mean? Like, not a lot of politicians could go with a light blue shirt, no undershirt, no sport coat, ask the tough questions in front of the lights and not completely and utterly just pit out on camera. Do you think that's weird, though? I mean, do you think that betrays some sort of uh, physiological issue that would make him bad in a crisis? Not owning a sport coat? No, not sweating. That's like, remember Prince Andrew was like, oh, I could not have had sex with that yeah. young woman because I don't sweat. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, which, by the way, I look at sweat as a hindrance when I'm trying to bed uh, a young woman mm. of age, of course. Oh. But the point is, is I, I never got that I don't sweat argument, although I believe him because when you're being asked if you're a pedophile on camera and you're not sweating, it probably means you don't sweat. And it also probably allegedly means you're a pedophile. Uh, I don't have anything to back that up here, Adam. Um, I do hope that your book is phenomenally successful. I know you have the most downloaded podcast in history, according to Guinness. Um, to what do you give credit to your illustrious career? Well, I would thank God, but um, I'm an atheist, maybe agnostic. Um, I just show up every day and I go to work and I talk and I did it for free for the first year or so. And I've never stopped doing it and I never approach it any different way. And uh, so I guess sort of early often consistency, you know, mixed with not apologizing and not sort of bending whatever my opinions are to the whims and ever changing winds of society. Yeah. The first time I heard you, it was as Mr. Bertram on the world famous K-Rock. And I was shocked to find out that you were not a 65 year old contractor. Uh, so thank you for defying expectations and for being on this program, Adam Carolla. Thanks, Kennedy. Always a pleasure. You're the best. Thank you.